the reproduction number RT is given in terms of an integral equation. It would be much nicer if we would have an explicit expression. Fortunately, we are able to find such an expression using a Laplace transform. In this video, you will see how we can find this explicit expression and we will also discuss the assumptions that we need to make. So, what will, uh, what will we find? First of all, what did we have? We had our i nu, uh, we had our reproduction number over here, it was inside the integral, we had some rho tilde of u, uh, which is the convolution of the probability densities rho and rho ei, where rho ei is the probability density that tells you uh, how long it takes to go from the exposed to the infected stage, and where the rho is a probability density that tells you uh, how long it takes that someone who is infected infects someone else. So uh, we, uh, uh, we assume that th those, are, those were known and then we compu can compute rho tilde. But now we want to compute RT. So we assumed for our uh, uh, probability densities, exponential de uh, probability densities rho EI and rho A. And with this assumption in the previous video, we computed rho tilde over here. And we also already computed its Laplace transform over here. So that's known. So assumption is that we assume uh, exponential distributions. This is debatable. Uh, fortunately, this can be easily generalized to better distributions like gamma distributions. So let's start with the exponential one, see what we get. And then if needed, we can generalize this. So this is not such a bad assumption in that sense. Second assumption, t is much larger than zero. So that means your epidemic has been going on for a long time, much longer than the average incubation time and average effectivity time, much longer than your regeneration time. Okay, that's probably fine. Uh, so you're basically talking about the ep epidemic which has been going on for months. That's usually uh, okay. So that means basically that your rho tilde of u is zero for u bigger than t. For bigger than t. Uh, so that means that you can replace the upper boundary infinity over here by upper boundary t over there. This uh, assumption is also perfectly fine um, because you're usually, uh, you, you will need epidemic data anyway. So you cannot determine RT if your epidemic has been going on for two weeks or so. That's, that's not going to work. However, if your epidemic has been going on for several months, then you're fine. So assumption two, technical assumption, which is uh, totally fine. Then assumption three, I had to make a technical assumption here, and I'm not entirely happy with that. So you have to say that you're in u at equals zero is, is zero, and also all the derivatives. Uh, this looks okay. You say, okay, I just picked my t equals zero before the epidemic started. Uh, that part is fine, but the slightly worrying part is that you have to pick them zero, not approximately equal to zero. Uh, because if they are only slightly bit uh, non-zero, we will encounter convergence problems with the integral later on with some inverse Laplace transform. So it has to be really zero over here. That's assumption number three. And there I was not too happy to be honest. But okay, we want our RT. Uh, here is a price we have to pay. Uh, maybe not entirely correct assumption. Then make some definitions. First of all, the small r of t, which is sort of growth rate of the of the infection. It's basically the logarithmic derivative of i nu, so the dt of uh, the ln of i nu, which equals one over i nu times i nu prime. Looks completely innocent, and if you have a smooth function i i nu, it is completely innocent. But this one is going to cause us some trouble later on. So that's the first definition. And then the convenience definition will put uh, all this rubbish over here and into one function, we'll call it f. So just to write something shorthand, then our i nu is convolution of f and rho tilde. Now we have uh, i nu something we know 
is a convolution and then we think of course immediately take the Laplace transform in order to get the uh, f out of the integral. So that's what we're going to do. We take the Laplace transform on the left and the Laplace transform of the right. So on the left you have the Laplace transform of E new and on the right you have the Laplace transform of a convolution. Uh, uh, that, uh, that means if you write the Laplace transform as uh, I new hat as function of S, uh, on the left you just get your i hat new of s and on the right uh, the Laplace transform of a convolution is a product of the Laplace transforms so you get just f hat times rho hat. Now rho hat we know already it's given over here uh, so we can solve for f hat remember uh, f hat contains somewhere r, uh, rt so we want to know f hat so we can solve for f hat and there we are f hat of s is a known function of s times i new hat. So copy that formula on the next slide. So this is the same as we had on the previous slide. And then uh, we uh, expand the brackets. So you have a one over b1 times b2 uh, in front of everything. And then a term is s squared times e new, a term s times e new, and a term is only e new. And now we have to uh, use this slightly dodgy assumption th 3. If you take the Laplace transform of i prime, so what do you get? S times e nu minus e nu at 0. And due to this assumption, this is just S times e nu, which you recognize over there. Similar idea for the second derivative. Laplace transform of a second derivative. S squared times e nu, which is fine. That's the one we have over here. And some constant terms. Uh, which we assume to be zero. So you get just s squared times e nu. And now you can uh, nicely uh, simplify your right hand side. So your f hat of s, you keep your 1 over b1 times the b2. This one becomes the Laplace transform of i double. This one becomes the Laplace transform of i prime. And just this one just remains as it is. As it is. So you have Laplace transform on the left equals some big Laplace transform on the right. Now, uh, then you can take inverse Laplace transforms on both sides or turn it into one Laplace transform and then you have the Laplace transform of something is zero and the something has, uh, the, then the something has to be zero or cancel just the Laplace transforms. Um, then you have your, finally your f of t in terms of i prime and so on. And that's what you wanted because your f of t equals r of t times i nu. Now I can simplify a bit by dividing by i nu. So dividing this one by i nu gives you a 1. And here you get a i prime uh, a nu over i nu and i do a nu over i nu as well. Okay, so fine, there you have your formula. Now you can use your logarithmic derivative, your r of t. Because r of t equals i prime over i nu, which you already recognize here as the middle term. Now, if you uh, 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 solve uh, for i prime, you get i prime equals r times i. And if you differentiate again, you find an expression for i double. i double equals r prime i plus r times i prime. And r i prime equals r times i. So here you have your i double equals r prime times i plus r squared times i so i double divided by i becomes also something nice so you can conclude your rt here you had your uh, i prime over i here you have your i double over i also simplifies you can even even rewrite a bit more and uh, combine these that and that term into a single product one plus uh, rt over b1 times 1 plus rt over b2 plus this term which is left r prime over b1 times b2 provided this condition rt has to be bigger than minus bi for all t which was coming uh, from the condition when we computed the uh, row tilde so finally there you have your uh, reproduction number rt given just this uh, information you can obtain from the epidemic your small rt and the b1 of mb2 which belong to your probability distribution functions.